Hey, what is up guys? I hope you're all doing well. Today is the day of the new Black Sun expansion. We've been waiting for it for like a few weeks now. We've discussed all the new cards, all the new releases, and it's finally here. So of course I made like several decks and I will be releasing one every few hours. The first one I made is the most important one and it's definitely the best one by far. It's the new Cultist Nilfgaard deck. So do not underestimate this deck. It is absolutely crazy. It has two scenarios in it, Masquerade Ball as well as Eternal Eclipse. I will show you how it works in detail. It's not as complicated as it sounds. I hope you guys enjoy it. And no, this is not too OP. Don't lose your minds, okay? A simple heat wave easily deals with this entire deck. So you sort of have to play around it, play a defender, bleed it out. It is still very strong. Um, and I'm gonna show you how it works now. All right, so here we go. This is the cult deck, all right? It has two scenarios in it. Firstly, we have Masquerade Ball, and secondly, we have the Eternal Eclipse. No, it is not overkill. We can easily afford both, believe me. So let's start off with this new idea of having two scenarios. You don't have to keep both for round three to make this deck work. You want to keep the Eternal Eclipse for a very long round and you want to keep Masquerade Ball for a round in which you need to gain round control or win the round. So I try to play Masquerade Ball round one or round two and I try to play the Eternal Eclipse in round three. The reason for this is Masquerade Ball doesn't need setup, it just needs an Aristocrat or two and the Eternal Eclipse needs substantial setup to get the most out of it. So let's start off with the Masquerade Ball real quick. You have the Masquerade Ball, of course it progresses whenever you play an Aristocrat on your side of the battlefield. It will then spawn a Thirsty Dame in the same row. In Chapter 1 it will spawn and play Fangs of the Empire, and in Chapter 2 it will again spawn and play Fangs of the Empire. Both of those cards poison a unit. Now these go very well together because of the fact that we're going to give out a few statuses with our uh, cult deck. But we're also going to have cards from our Aristocrat deck that sort of turn into engines when you give out statuses. So, Thirsty Dame, whenever an enemy unit receives a status, boost self by one. Now remember, status is literally anything that goes onto the card from an infused uh, status, Veil, Poison, Lock, Doomed, all of that will trigger Thirsty Dame. So we start off round one, we want to win the round, so we play Masquerade Ball. We then trigger Masquerade Ball with two Thirsty Dames. We also have two Van Moerlem Hunters. Both of these will trigger Masquerade Ball. Now the Van Moerlem Hunter is a full provision lock, which is great. Or you can give a card bleeding if need be. So if that wasn't enough to trigger it, we have some more Aristocrats. Philip Van Moerlem is a really cool card in this deck. You can also use this in round 3 with your cultist cards. So if you control a vampire, this card will gain zeal, otherwise it's fine, you can just use its order ability. With its order ability, you can use it every turn and you can give a status to an enemy unit. So if the enemy unit doesn't yet have a status, you can give it doomed. If it already has a status, you can lock it. If it has two statuses, you can poison it. So obviously the more stuff you have on a card, the easier it is to lock it or to poison it. And that's what this card is going to do. So next up we have Vincent van Moerlehem, perfect for this deck. It's also an aristocrat and a vampire, and it will destroy an enemy unit with any status, which is really good. All right, so I think it's time to get to the fun part. How do the cultists work? So let's first explain how the Eternal Eclipse work. Now I did reveal this card and if you want to you can go and watch the reveal again. But in more detail, this card relies on cultists. Now it will only progress whenever you play a gold cultist. So you might ask yourself, well we don't have gold cultists in this deck. Well we do, we have a few actually because of the Master of Ceremonies. This is your first gold cultist. But look what it does. At the start of the game, infuse two random gold non-cultist units in your starting deck with cultist category and infuse them with, after the card is played or summoned, if you control three or more cultists, damage the lowest power infused enemy unit by three. 
So all that other is a bit unnecessary. You can sort of read over that later. Basically, there's a lot more that happens. But if you have this card in your deck, without playing it, it will at the start of your game infuse two of your gold cards with the cultist keyword. So you'll have two extra gold cultists in your deck. And that's all you need to know for now. Now, those cultists, when you play them, will also damage the lowest power enemy unit that is infused by three points. And we'll get to that in a second. So that card is gonna help substantially. Our other cultist is going to be this one. Now, this is just the cool Nilfgaard cultist, and it's really nice. It damages itself by two, then locks all of your opponent's units in their hand until the end of the round, and the next time your opponent plays a locked unit, it will remove all the locks. Now, this is quite cool. So, it has adrenaline too, meaning you have to play it when you have four cards in hand. So, you play it as the fourth card, and then it will have adrenaline three. Otherwise, it just locks itself. So, obviously, a lot of people keep some of their bigger cards for later, like Morgvarg. And if you can time this correctly, they have to waste one of their cards because it's going to be locked, which is kind of funny. Also, this card art is seriously creepy and it reminds me of that one episode in Adventure Time where the guy lost his eyes and they were in his beard the whole time. Yeah, uh, let's go over to the Eternal Eclipse card again. Okay, so when you play this, it will spawn the Eternal Eclipse Initiate in this row. Now, this is the most basic Eclipse card and it's really, uh, it's not even that important for what we're trying to achieve. This you'll try and keep for round three. The Eternal Eclipse Initiate on order will infuse a bronze enemy unit. So you're going to target an enemy bronze card and that card will have whenever your opponent plays a cultist damage self by one. So every time you play a cultist that enemy bronze is going to damage itself. Now, if you kill the card, it will spawn a base copy of itself on your side of the board and set its power to 1 and infuse it with cultist category. So basically, all this does is you give an enemy unit a status which will damage it by 1 every time you play a cultist. It's as simple as that. And you want to keep this card for later because it's useless in round 1. You don't want any cultist waste in round 1. You don't want to waste any of them. So what you rather do is you focus on getting Eternal Eclipse Deacons on the board. So the Eternal Eclipse Deacon, you want to play as early as possible. And that's why we keep the Eternal Eclipse for later. Because you only want to play the Eternal Eclipse when you have as many cultists in your deck as possible. So this will infuse a unit in your hand with cultist category. And then on order ability, it will infuse a unit in your deck with the cultist category. So if you can play a bunch of these, you will be able to have a bunch of cultists ready to go in a long round three for your Eternal Eclipse scenario. Of course, we can also make one of those with Aptuarius Vigo if we get lucky. All right, so why do we want a bunch of cultists in our deck? When we reach chapter one, we will infuse all non-disloyal, so anything that isn't placed on your opponent's side of the board, cultists on the battlefield in your hand and in your deck with whenever you play a cultist boost self by one then increase this value by one if it was a bronze so that is what we're going for so in a long round every single cultist you have on the board will boost itself by one every time you play a cultist if you play a bronze cultist that one point value will change into a two point value so then the next cultist you play will boost it by two. If you play another bronze cultist, it will change to three. If you play another bronze, it's four and then five. And then every time you play a cultist, that cultist will boost itself by five points. It's ridiculously strong. So that's what this whole deck is geared towards. Win round one with Masquerade Ball. Round two, just build more cultists. And then round three, slam them all onto the board with the Eternal Eclipse and get the most out of those engines. Chapter 2 is sort of extra, spawn and play Eternal Eclipse Deacon. That's not even as necessary. It will just give you another Eternal Eclipse Deacon, but your whole thing relies on Chapter 1 working. And that's all this deck really is. So you want as many cultists in your deck, and then you want to play the Eternal Eclipse. 
it's as simple as that. Now, a lot of people have started heatwaving the Eternal Eclipse, which makes me very sad, because that ruins our strategy. So I have given us a Defender. Now, in the original deck guide I have posted, you'll see uh, Jan Kalvait. I know we don't have any tactics in this deck, but Jan Kalvait found itself into a round one hand quite often, and I felt it was necessary. You can still decide which one you want. Defender is more important, I feel. But as long as you have a bunch of units, none of them being disloyal, you have a good deck. Remember, every single card that is a special is a waste because that means they can't turn into a cultist. And you want as many cultists as possible. That's also a reason that you'll never play something like Brothens in this list. Brothens will create and play a bronze disloyal unit from your starting deck. And that would rely on cards like the Duchess Informant. And you don't want the Duchess Informant to get cultist status because that's just an absolute waste of a card. So it is important for this deck to have a lot of units that stay on your side of the board. Other than that, we have the Blightmaker, you know how this works. Often I infuse the Blightmaker with cultist ability and the Mage Assassin, because if you play them both, both of them will come onto your board as cultists and they will all be able to become engines with the Eternal Eclipse ability. We also have Maxi just to ensure that we actually draw both scenarios. So uh, that's quite necessary. We have two extra Fangs of the Empire for poison. The Van Moerlem Cupbearer will poison a unit or purify a unit. And Yennefer is there just in case. We still need one card that's able to guarantee removal in last say, and I thought Yennefer is quite necessary for that. Of course, we also have the Imprisonment Leader ability, which is just some extra control because the meta is still growing and we don't know what we need to deal with, so Imprisonment allows us to do so. We also have a Collar, which will lock an enemy and damage it by three. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. I'm really proud of this baby. Um, I think it's really strong. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Again, not as difficult as it sounds. Download the deck and try it out yourself. You'll quickly get the hang of it and see just how scary it is. Okay, Tia, keep it in your pants. <laughs> You're getting too excited. Oh, look at that. It's Jan Colvate. It's almost like I knew what I was doing all along. Um, or, or just very lucky, am I right? Uh, infuse a bronze enemy unit with whenever this opponent plays a call to damage up by one. No, not yet, not yet. Okay, so we need to win round one. That is the goal. So I'm going to start off with Masquerade. Wait, um, Arturias could be better. Arturias first. Ah, oh, okay, so I was actually hoping for something else. So what you want, okay, so that was the wrong option. It's fine, it's a pancake game. What you want to start off with is the uh, Deacon. Uh, Prosage, thanks for the follow, I appreciate it. Uh, the Deacon is going to start infusing cards in your deck with the Cultist tag, and you need that. So we can go for a long round three with Cultists on the board, because they were in a very good spot. But right now I almost feel like we hold on to the Masquerade Bull. Okay, so as you can see, we already have two golds with the cultist tag now because of our Master of Ceremonies. Uh, where, uh, where is Vincent when you need it? Uh, yeah, it's gonna have to be masquerade So this should help guarantee us run control. Matahuri, okay. Again, not the bronze I want. 
So we get Mata Huri and next up Thirsty Dame. You know what? We might go for another poison in this deck instead of the tortoise. We don't yet have the link uh, chat. We first have to make sure this is perfect. <laughs> we have to make the perfect deck and I am here to do that today. So, Masquerade will round one. Guarantees round control. Hmm. Good day, Tia. Good day, Gabriel. How are you doing? Calvate guarantees good uh, draws. So that makes up for the fact that we don't have tutors. Again, we want as many units in this deck as possible. We do not want any specials because that ruins our game plan. Okay, chat. We're good. This is going to be a lot of fun. Last say, Yennefer. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to go into a mega long round now. <laughs> also with our leader ability we get last removal with Vincent too so last day removal is gonna help quite a bit hello wolf welcome brother so again it's the deacons we want three four five six seven eight uh i will keep all cards in my hand and Alexicus. Poker Smuggler. Make the circle bigger. Trust Butterflies. Yeah. We want the biggest, best cult in the world. Ah, uh, hey, Zuku. Love the season already. First cake open direct legendary middle and of course new syndicate scenario I'm in. One and two. Um, okay, not what I want. You have to go. You have to go. You have to go. Nice. Okay, so we got the deacon but it's way too late actually. Okay. Spawn Eternal Eclipse Initiate on this row. Infuse all your non disloyal cards on your the battlefield in your hand and your deck with it. Yes, okay, so this is what we want right now. Yes, okay, good. Malcolm Defender gets a quick lock. Um, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, infuse a bronze enemy unit with whenever your opponent plays the cultist damage shot by one death wish, spawn a base copy yourself on the opposite row. Yes. Alright. Now we play the Eternal Eclipse Deacon. Infuse. Oh, did we not draw Vincent? Oh, we did draw Vincent. Oh, yeah, first in hand. So it's going to be Vincent van Murlem. Uh, you know what? We're going to go with the Blightmaker. Beautiful. And we're going to give this a quick lock. Okay. Rain free. Okay, okay. Nicely done. I'm here for it. Destroy an enemy with 10 or less power. Okay, not bothered. Coco L, is that sarcasm or are you serious? <laughs> I need to know before I press some buttons on my other screen. Um, so, we've got Eternal Eclipse Deacon. Okay, so, infuse all your non-disloyal cultists on the battlefield in your hand with whenever you play a cultist, boost up by one. Uh, so this already has the cultist. After this card is played or summoned, if you control three or more cultist damage to the lower power infused enemy by three. Perfect. Hell yes. Okay. 
and we're gonna go with the Mage Assassin. So that's gonna come out onto the board. Coco El Tuco, it, I don't care what you want. <laughs> Nothing personal, I couldn't care less. Um, we've got new cards, we're gonna play them, okay? If it's too much, then maybe take a break from playing games. <laughs> After using your leader ability, randomly split a damage. Okay, so that was actually really nicely done. Um, all right, so whew, that was a lot. Uh, spawn and play Eternal Eclipse Deacon again. Okay, so now these are all infused. Whenever you play a cultist, boost up by one, increase value if it's a bronze. This is now officially a cultist, so I'm going to play it onto the board. So all of them are going to get one more point. And now they will increase themselves by three for the next bronze you play. Okay, so if left unchecked, this deck will generate a lot of points. What cult leader are you? In TR cult, do people mysteriously disappear? I wouldn't say mysteriously. I'd say it's pretty obvious where they go. Okay, so now they're going to increase themselves by three. Watch it. Next time they're going to increase themselves by four. Okay, uh, let's do that. And then a Prophet is going to be so good, by the way. I've never played Prophet, but my gosh, <laughs> this is good. Because um, Prophet is going to lock the cards that they want to play. And uh, they might very well have something like Skags. Okay, let's just quickly take a look here. Um, after this, if you control three or more cultists, the lowest power by three. Okay, that's probably what we want to do, right? So I'm going to play melee poison onto the 16 just because I can. Three, nicely done. And another one's... <sighs> Uh, hey, Bartes. If yeah. Come on, chat. It's time to join Tia's cult. You're all invited. Okay. Prophet, let's go. <laughs> yes. Oh, would you look at that? It's Vincent saying hello. Do we get to wear cool robes? Well, you don't even just get to, you have to. It's like one of the requirements. Would you look at that? Theory crafting paid off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they called me mad. They called me a mad woman. I'm just uh, writing some stuff. Okay, get rid of Mage Assassin. Beautiful looking hand, by the way. Beautiful looking hand. Okay, also replace Maxi. Okay, got it. Spin the wheel. Set the stage. That was a voice line. That was cool. Spin the wheel, set the stage. That sounds like my cult, if I'm gonna be honest. 
Once you see beyond the occult fumes and elitist allure, only then you cease to be a piece and become the player. Love it. Hey, Morsini, I'm doing well. How are you doing? How did your game the other day went? Um, go. How did it go? Am I running Paler? No, not necessary. Uh, Warsaw's chaotic, like the cyberpunk cities. Don't know what kind of thing you're looking for. <laughs> if something fun like casinos, then we might have a problem. There aren't casinos in Poland? No, I'm not addicted to gambling. I don't need a casino. <laughs> Imperial Brigade. Alright, so just setting up our scenario for later. We're going to target Philip. Nice. And uh, next. Why not another one? Okay, this is going to go on to the Van Murlem Hunter. Which four point card was taken out? Uh, I took out, so you can go onto the deck here. I wrote it down. You can take out the squirrel and replace it for Maxi. Looks like a rain free deck, oh yeah. Could be, could be a rain free deck. No problem. There might be some, but not that good. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. I won't be having time for that anyway. Okay. You have this round, my friend. Yeah, that's a 12 point thin right there. Also cost you uh, six provisions. Okay, get rid of the a guardian, get rid of mage assassin, and we are good. Haven't seen Rainfree yet, but I crafted her in premium the moment I opened the game. Nicely done. Uh, <laughs> no. Sorry, friend, that's not gonna fly. They're going for it. Okay, fine. Am I playing Curse Scroll? No. Just color. Dear gosh. Calm down. If this is double Kogram and Rain Free, I'm about to scream. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I can easily deal with Kogram, to be fair. Is it? 
Nice. Damn. They're going for the 2-0. Okay. I mean, we'll just literally kill Corcoran real quick. Infiltrator. At least they're giving us time to catch up. Uh, Faber Jester, thank you for the follow. Yeah, they're probably going to go for it, right? It would be funny if I played Prophets. It would be more funny if I played Prophets in round 3. They don't have any cards left for round three. If we survive, true, true, true. I always find a way in. So both cards in his hand is now locked. Wait, what? There we go. It sounds a bit quiet. Is that better? Thanks for the uh, follow, Komar and Jermas. I could have gone for bleeding instead with that one. It, not that it would have mattered. But we're good. It's not a draw. <laughs> GG. Against Frost. Frost didn't get any changes. It was just Oberon that's now evolve instead of the normal change so it retains anything put on it uh, as gulag zuck thanks for the follow oh look how nice that is now that it's moving uh, okay and we got maxi great stuff we're gonna get rid of the initiate because we don't need that round one beautiful uh we can start off with maxi is the patch live for everyone? Yes, it is live for everyone. Uh, okay, are we happy with this hand is the question. We are not. Blightmakers are all in the bottom. Horrible hand. Nilf Guardians are watching and paying respect. <laughs> Thank you. Hey Klimpe, how are you doing? It is going well. Thank you. We are having fun. Okay, so what are we about to play next? For now, we can play the Eternal Eclipse Deacon and target the Fangs of the Empire. We can also kill the Phantom, but that feels like overkill. Yeah, it is overkill. We rather keep our locks for, for some other engines that are going to be a bit scarier. You played against pirates already? Yes. Pirates are good. I did not hear anything when you showed them. No, they don't yet have sound yet. They told us the sound is only coming out later. 
Uh, Nint, thanks for the follow. Okay, so I think it's time for Masquerade Ball. Um, let's give this to Arturius Vigo. And play Masquerade Ball right here. Nice. Hey, Panda. I'm alright. 4th of July fireworks on the lake almost ended in a giant fireball, but it worked out safely in the end. As long as it worked out safely in the end. <laughs> Found you on U uh, YouTube. I'm new to Gwent. Well, welcome, Nance. It's awesome to have you here. Are you enjoying it so far? You came at the perfect opportunity. Or, well, the perfect timing, because we just got a new expansion with new cards. I've learned with Frost you can't just pass anymore. If you do, they can get hit so easily. Because they have the Winter Queen. If I had Vincent, I would be very happy. Alright, what are your cultists up to? Oh, they're just having a bit of a, a tea party. There we go. The queen's gonna come out now. We hate you, Winter Queen. Nobody likes you. I'm back to Gwent after a long time. Aside from Skelliger, which faction should I play? Ooh, Square Tower is going to be a lot of fun. And definitely Skelliger and Nilfgaard. Not ideal. They have a lot of tempo. I'm in trouble. Well, <laughs> that's about it. Building your Nilfgaard deck from YouTube, hope it's not outdated. Uh, depends which one you are building, my friend. to stay ahead here but that might just do it 
They might also just pass. I'm oddly okay with that. March is a bit old. March is a bit old. Hey, Dubin. Uh, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Okay, uh, I can make this work. Which background music is this? Can you hear the background music? It is Dandelion's Journey music. How is the consistency of this double scenario deck? Consistency is actually quite good. We had Colvate, but it proved rather useless. Hey Jake, thanks for the prime. CB, hey, hey, CB Pixie. I appreciate it. 11 months, you are so close to 12. I hope you're doing amazingly well. I'm just trying to figure out what I need to do here. Um, I need to play Artorias Vigo. You will not regret this, good, and should have played that in the same row. Then I want to play Eternal Eclipse Initiative. Initiate. Okay, so already we have these on two point engines. Yeah, I should have placed them all in the same row, that's my fault. Next, we have to play Profit. Thanks for the decks on YouTube. I, I'm glad you like them, it makes me very happy if they come in handy. Okay, so now they're on three. Three point engine, two point engine. Nice. Hmm. I came, I saw, I conquered. Again. Your souls will prepare for this launch. Yes! Hoo-ha! 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 That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> 